Anyone who studies biology should damn well know this. Life is about adaptation. And if you've not been adapting to something, you're not designed for it. If you have been adapting to it for millions of years, then you are adapted to it and it is beneficial and it is good for you. There's an entire population with three quarters of a million people in the Akikuyu who in 1931 were eating a clean, non-processed food diet, plant-based. And the Maasai were eating a clean, non-processed food, animal-based diet. And the Maasai were Welcome to the Plant-Free MD Podcast with Dr. Anthony Chafee, where we discuss diet and nutrition and how this affects health and chronic disease, and show you how you can use this to optimize your health and happiness, both mentally and physically. Uh, hypothesis. Ketones uh, is not a starvation survival function as commonly thought, but a result of abundance, dietary, or stored fat that gets interrupted when we eat plants. Thoughts? No, I, I I agree. I don't think this is a survival function. I think this is our this is our primary metabolic state. This is the primary metabolic state of essentially well, all, most animals, at least in the wild. So carnivores and herbivores are in a state of ketosis, a starvation state, um, because they're always getting meat and fat. They don't they don't take in a bunch of carbohydrates. So carnivores, because they eat animals with fat, they go for the fat first. They're eating fat and meat, right? So they absorb fat and protein high proportion of fat to protein generally and then uh but also herbivores because they don't you know they're they're taking in a bunch of fiber which is just all carbs but that's not actually what they absorb because no vertebrate animal can break down uh no vertebrate animal can break down uh, fiber and so it's actually the fiber is there to feed their gut bacteria and the gut bacteria eat that break down all the fiber and then as their waste they secrete short chain fatty acids which are also 100% saturated so they absorb the fat they absorb the waste the it's sort of weird to think about but the byproduct of this bacteria that's what they absorb and then the bacteria die off and they break those down and absorb those as proteins so what a cow eats is grass, but what they absorb is fat and protein. What a gorilla eats are green leaves. What they absorb is fat and protein and all the way down, down the line. So, um, yeah, so that, so gorillas and cows are in the same ketogenic so-called starvation state. So it's not a starvation state. The only reason we call it a fasting state is by the time we were able to look at our biochemistry at a molecular level, everyone was eating carbohydrates and it says, okay, what does this look like when we eat? Oh, It looks like this. Great. And okay, what about if we stop eating? Does it look the same? Well, no, actually about 24 hours, it looks this other way. Oh, very interesting. That must be a fasting state that changes. Okay. But if you eat anything else on earth except carbohydrates, it also looks like this so-called fasting state. So they just jumped the gun a bit. You know, they didn't test things out um, as much as they should have. And and this is this is up until current day. And that's what I was taught in biochemistry, you know, two decades ago. And uh, it's wrong, right? Because when I eat 5,000 calories in ribeye, I am not fasting. And so whatever my, whatever you can say about my metabolic state, you cannot say it's a fasting state because not fasting, right? So I think that that's our primary metabolic state. That's, and that's the primary metabolic state of, of most animals in the wild, except you know, little birds and bees and things that, that eat nectar. God knows what their metabolism is like. But uh, for for the other carnivores and herbivores out there, you know, you're running on fat and protein, and so I think that's that's uh, that the what we call a fed state, what we call our primary state, is actually a pathological defense mechanism that your body's defending against high blood sugar, because high blood sugar is toxic. It damages. It causes direct damage to your body, and kill, this is what kills diabetics: is, is prolonged high blood sugar. Right. So those glucose molecules physically fuse to other molecules and they damage them. They cause permanent damage and disruption to your body. And so your body looks at that and goes, sweet Jesus, what's going on here? And you slam up insulin to try to get this out and and save the save the you know the body. And so that that's that's just a a, a, a defense mechanism. That's not our normal state. Right, because if we're eating what we're designed to eat, what we're normally eating, what we were eating during the ice ages, that's not the state we're in. And so, you can call it ketosis. You can call it whatever you want. You know, people say that the the Inuit don't go into ketosis. 
but that's really because they're just their ketones are pretty low. Uh, you get better at, at using your ketones as you go and uh, you get more efficient at it. So at first you have high ketones because your body's not keto adapted and it's not. And so you have just like if you're insulin resistant, your blood sugar goes up and it's harder for your body to get this into the cells to use. So at first you're ketone resistant, right? Because you don't have the mechanisms set up to use ketones properly because you haven't been using them. You haven't been making them. And, uh, you know, just like when you go back to eating carbs, all of a sudden you're not making enough insulin. You know, like, Oh God, okay. Got to get those wheels turning again. And so for ketones, it just takes a bit of time, but it, when you've been on it long enough, your ketones aren't that high. That's because you're using them. You're using them better. And whatever happens, it's supposed to happen, right? Because you're eating what you're supposed to eat. And so whatever happens is supposed to happen. And the the Inuit, you know, they say, well, they're not in ketosis. I don't know because they're making ketones. They're making blood sugar. They're making glycogen. They're not just running off of the, uh, you know, I mean, there's, there's glycogen in meat and organs, but is that enough to run all of their energy demands? Is their insulin chronically elevated? No, I don't think so. So not that I know of anyway. So I think that they are in ketosis. I just think that it looks different when you've been on it your whole life, as opposed to just a six week study. Hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying this replay of my YouTube live. If you'd like to catch a live version and ask your own questions, please go to the next scheduled one, usually every Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. All right, see you then, and please enjoy the rest of the Q&A. So, um, but yeah, I definitely agree that I we the fasting state is not uh, a fasting state, that, um, that I think that's our, our primary metabolic state. And that's where all of our heavy machinery come to bear. That's where all the beneficial biochemical actions happen. That's where autophagy comes from, mitophagy, replacing your mitochondria and, and, and bulking up their number. Um, <clears throat> um, you know, all the different benefits you get from, from fasting, all these different, oh, that we know fasting is so good for you. So you go on a carnivore diet, it just mimics fasting. No, no. Fasting mimics the metabol metabolism you're supposed to be in all the time anyway, which you would be in if you were on your proper diet. How can we say that eating a whole bunch of grains and sugar and processed crap is normal for us? None of that existed in, in the last ice age or any ice age or before the 1800s. Why are, why are we eating things that didn't exist before, you know, before the 1800s? I mean, there, there are things that we're eating now that didn't exist before we were even born, right? Why the hell are we eating them? You definitely aren't adapted to those things, right? Uh, what are we adapted to? We're adapted to meat. Whatever you're adapted to, that's what you're supposed to eat. That's what, that's a, that's an immutable law of biology is adaptation. You, you get, stressors and survival pressures and whatever can adapt best to that situation survives and thrives. And we not only survived, we not only thrived, we became the most dominant species on earth during ice ages when all we had to eat was meat, right? So we are well adapted to eating meat. We are not well adapted to eating any plants. And you know, some people have a bit of adaptation, eight to 10,000 years with agriculture. A lot of people don't. A lot of people have not been introduced to agriculture until they were met by the Western colonial powers a few hundred years ago. And many of them still didn't eat any of that garbage. They knew better. It's only in sort of the recent century and a half that they started doing that. The Native Americans were still eating mostly meat. Until, you know, we wiped out the buffalo in the, the, the American Indian Wars, you know, Buffalo Bill, which I still think is just a, an atrocity, just an absolute atrocity. And, um, but that's what it was. And so in the 1800s, the Native Americans and Plains Indians were the tallest human beings on earth. That's been well studied and documented. And now they are not. They started eating a Western diet. They are more likely to get obese and sick and diabetic and metabolic issues and cancer and, and these other sorts of things when eating a Western diet. So what does that mean? That means if, you know, that means the food is causing the disease because if they don't eat the food, they don't get the disease and we eat the food and we get the disease. We just get it at a lower rate because we have had a bit of protection. We've had a bit of adaptation. 10,000 years is not that much, but 
it does something. And so we have some adaptive measures to protect us, where the Native Americans don't, the Native Australians don't, Sub-Saharan Africans don't have as much. And so that's that's uh, where you see a lot of disparities in health come from that background. How long have you been exposed to these nasty plants that we really shouldn't be eating? If you've been exposed to them longer, you can do better with them. If you have not had much exposure to them, you know, uh, genetically in your, in your uh, genetic past, then you're not as adapted to it. The law of nature, the law of biology is adaptation. And if you have not had time to adapt, you should not be eating or exposing yourself to that thing. You want to expose yourself to things that you are well adapted to. And what we are well adapted to, all humans, is meat. And so that's what you should eat. Hey guys, just want to take a second to thank our sponsor, Carnivore Bar. I don't promote many products because honestly, all you need to be healthy is to just eat meat. For those times that you're out hiking, road tripping, or stuck at work and you want a nutritious snack that is just meat, fat, and salt if you want it, the Carnivore Bar is a great option. So I like this product not because it's just pure meat, but also because I want the Carnivore market to thrive as well. And the more we support meat-only products, the more meat-only products there will be available in the mainstream. So if this sounds like something you'd like to get behind, Check it out using my discount code Anthony to get 10% off, which also applies to subscriptions, giving you 25% off total. All right. Thanks, guys. Basics asks, hey, Anthony, uh, love what you do. Well, thank you very much. Uh, when are you going to make a documentary in the same style as a Game Changers? Well, I'm, yeah, I don't know. I was thinking about it, actually. But, um, you know, I, I just, God, I just don't know when the hell I would do it. Um, but people like Carrie Mann from Homestead Howe it just jumped right on that train and he saw how much of a massive benefit this made for him and he started talking to a lot of people who was massively helping he's just like no we need to get a documentary out we need to get this on netflix we need to do something big and uh and so he's working on that so he's working on a carnivore documentary and so i've, I've uh well tried to help out with that as much as i can and uh, put him in touch with different people that can help with that and uh and i'll be presumably um in it as well and, and talking to him or, and talking about all this sort of stuff in that documentary. And so hopefully that, that gets out. Now, um, Brian Sanders has been doing this for six years now. So he's, he's um, you know, the, the um, creator of Food Lies and the, you know, created that. So he's, he's making this documentary about Food Lies and, and now not necessarily carnivore, but, but, n the vilification about meat is dead ass wrong and showing that this is wrong and actually eating animal based is very appropriate is more appropriate. So it's not a carnivore do uh, documentary per se, but it's pretty damn close and it really goes exactly the opposite of where every other documentary says, Oh my God, less meat, less meat, less meat, less meat. Oh, it's just, just meat just causing disease or just stop eating it and you'll get better. Eat any ass plant that you want. It doesn't matter. It's hemlock, whatever, just eat it. Just, just plants because that's what they say. More, more fruits and vegetables, less meat. You do better. Okay. Well, which ones, you know, they are different, you know, and most plants on earth are inedible. So you can't just tell people just to eat any random plant and it'll be good. And, any meat will be bad. That's ridiculous. That is just ridiculous. Again, going back to adaptation and these immutable laws of biology. Anyone who studies biology should damn well know this. Life is about adaptation. And if you've not been adapting to something, you're not designed for it. If you have been adapting to it for millions of years, then you are adapted to it and it is beneficial and it is good for you. And, um, you know, people like Simon Hill will say, well, just because we're adapted to it, we've been eating it for millions of years. It doesn't mean it's actually good for us. Okay. You name one example anywhere on earth that that's true anywhere, you know, lions have been eating meat for millions of years, but yeah, but, a, but a fresh spring salad is going to be better for them. Really? Okay. Prove it. Right. So why would it be different for humans and no other animal on earth? Why would the laws of adaptation only apply to other animals and not humans? That is ridiculous. That is a ridiculous statement. So you have a lot of these ridiculous statements. And then you have the Maasai and the Akikuyu, who then people will say, well, but the Akikuyu, yes, they're not doing as well. They're much less healthy, um, but they 
you know, they, they, that's not the vegan diet I would recommend or the vegetarian diet because they do eat some meat and dairy, very little. That's not the vegetarian diet I would recommend. Okay. So they're doing, they're doing vegetarianism wrong. That's always the classic excuse. You're just doing vegetarianism wrong. Well, your studies say that more fruits and vegetables and less meat equal better. But there's an entire population with three quarters of a million people in the Akikuyu who in 1931 were eating a clean, non-processed food diet, plant-based. And the Maasai were eating a clean, non-processed food, animal-based diet. And the Maasai were far and away more healthy, better developed, five inches taller, bigger brains, more, uh, uh, more body, lean body mass, and stronger and healthier, had less health defects, right? And birth de and um, um, uh, developmental defects, right? Well, that's but that's not the vegetarian diet I would recommend. Okay, you said less meat, better. These guys have more meat; they're doing better. These guys are having more plants, less meat; they're doing worse. So, your studies are crap. If a study does not disagrees with reality, it's wrong. Period. Doesn't matter, right? So even even like mathematical equations. You know, uh, Richard Feynman said, physicist, he said, doesn't matter how brilliant your th theory is and it doesn't matter how smart you are. If it doesn't agree with experiment, it's wrong. And so you write this mathematical proof and Einstein was known to do this. And you write this mathematical proof, say, I proved this. Great. And everyone's like, my God, you're a genius. And then they go and observe things and go like, yep, that's not what's happening. Throw it out. And Einstein would throw it out because he was smart enough to know that it didn't matter what he thought he proved in a mathematical proof. He just looked at it and said, yeah, that's not what's happening. Okay. Obviously there's something here going on that I don't know. I don't have all the variables. And so we toss it out and that's what you have to do. And so, oh, but there's this study and it said, I don't care. First of all, the majority of studies come from, uh, food, the food and drug industry. Why would you listen to any of those? Uh, you know, the Coca-Cola, just Coca-Cola, not Kellogg's, Pepsi, Nestle, General Mills, all the rest of them. Just Coca-Cola spends 11 times the amount of money on nutritional research every year than the National Institutes of Health, the NIH, right? The vast majority of, of these studies are put out by the, the companies trying to sell you this shit, Right? So, you know, I'm, I'm sure, you know, heroin cartels are going to put out as many studies as they can to tell you how great heroin is, right? Why would you trust that? You know, it's the same thing. These are cartels. These are drug cartels. They are making you sick. They are making you addicted and they are profiting. This is, this is the opium trade. This is the new opium trade where people are making entire empires based on your addiction and your sickness. Do not listen to these people. And now they're and then they're putting out studies saying how great opium is. I bet they are, right? Why would you listen to that? Why would you listen to this crap? It doesn't agree with reality, right? So, well, more plants, less less meat. That's better because meat causes harm. That's their contention. But you have the Maasai, more meat, more dairy, drinking blood, barely any plants. And they're the healthiest people in that region, right? And they interbreed, they intermarry, right? So they're genetically similar, right? And you have three quarters of a million Akikuyu at the time, mostly plant-based, clean, no processed food, no pesticides, no fertilizers, anything like that, not doing very well. And it wasn't, in, and, and they supplemented them, gave them, uh, you know, nutritional supplements because they're all deficient, got them up to, up to snuff. Didn't help, didn't help their health issues. It wasn't until they replaced the plants they were eating with meat. That's when they improved. Okay. So again, it doesn't meet with reality. It's wrong. Okay. And, um, and so people like Brian Sanders are making documentaries showing all the lies and how wrong this stuff is. So that's coming out. Hopefully that'll be done this year. He's put a lot of work into that and I'm really excited to see that. Um, I have a, a bit of a cameo in it if they decide to keep uh, some of my my things I've said in there, uh, which would be great. But uh, but it's massive. It's massive. That means they've been putting this together for six years. So I'm really excited for that. So that'll be uh, so people don't know Brian Sanders. Uh, just look him up on on Instagram. Um, he has uh, a YouTube channel and podcast as well. Uh, it's all run out of 
like his uh, Instagram page is um, Food Lies. And I think it's the website like foodlies.com or something like that, but certainly on Instagram. And so that's Brian's um, Instagram. And you can, you can find all the YouTube channel and podcast stuff through that as well. And I've been on his podcast and he's been on mine. So really nice guy. And, um, and he, I'm really looking forward to that documentary. And then I'm really looking forward to carry, uh, carry man's documentary as well. Because that, that one is specifically carnivore, like carnivore helps people. And they're going to be following people and tracking people as they go. They're like, okay, I'm going to get started on carnivore and, and they're doing before middle and after and seeing how this affects people in real time, which I think is really, really powerful. One of the, one of the most, gripping and powerful food documentaries, which really started the genre was, uh, it's called fat, sick and nearly dead. And people were, this guy was very sick on, well, he's taking all these medications. He had, I think he had some autoimmune issues and he basically went to just a clean non-processed food diet and was juicing vegetables, but he was still eating meat, but he was just sort of juicing things and stuff like that. And you could see him, he was just losing weight and skin getting better. And like throughout the documentary, he was going around talking to people and he was just looking healthier and healthier and healthier as he went. And he's always drinking this green smoothie. So that was influenced by the, by the vegan uh, community, like Dr. Uh, Joel Furman, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure it's Joel Furman. And, um, and uh, so that had that sort of bent, but it was very, it was very powerful. Now this was only him. It was only his, progress um whereas in the carnivore diet we're going to be showing all sorts of people or carrie's going to be showing all sorts of people not just one person getting better and and really talking about the science behind it and things like that so hopefully it has has a similar impact and um yeah so so exciting times so um i don't know maybe i'll do one i am working on a book i'm hoping to get it out at the end of the year i'm, I'm sort of getting more on on top of that and um uh, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see if, uh, if I can get that out by the end of the year or early next year. And and um, and then, yeah, we have these cool documentaries coming out on in the pipeline as well. So that's exciting. Hey, everyone. If you need a little extra help getting started on a carnivore diet and my online resources that I have for free aren't enough for you, you can go to www.howtocarnivore.com and sign up for a 30-day carnivore challenge where you'll have online resources, group support, weekly Zoom meetings, as well as the ability to chat live with myself, Simon Lewis, and the others in the challenge who can help you and support you and give you extra advice and help you along the way. So if that sounds like something that would be beneficial to you, then please go to howtocarnivore.com and sign up. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you there.